Hi guys, how we doing? Welcome to the Free Admins Podcast. It's me, Chicharito. <laughs> and uh, Luke, how we doing, mate? You all right? Yeah, brilliant, mate. Great t-shirt, by the way. I don't know where you got that from. <laughs> it's a great t-shirt. It does actually uh, say Chicharito. I, I, see, um, I see the rib man on Twitter actually already saying that he's ordered something like two to three hundred sombreros ready for the first game of the season. Like, again, the man's just a money-making machine. He's a very Absolutely. clever man. <laughs> Um, yeah, so again, not much has happened recently. Um, there's a couple of outs and stuff that we'll talk about, but I'm going to start off with the friendly yesterday and sort of sum up all the friendlies. We've got one more left. Mm. Man City on Friday, which is going to be a real test, please believe me. Um, but yesterday, um, we drew 3-3. It was quite, an, quite a good game, actually. Quite exciting game. Poor defending from us in general. Mm. Um, Reed got sent off as well. <laughs> I was actually reading it. Um... Apparently, that does carry on, so he'll be suspended. What, for league? Uh, I don't know if it'll be for the league, but apparently there's precedent. Um, it's happened to a couple of Man United players before, but if you get sent off pre-season, the ban carries over. Hmm. So yeah, I don't so know whether that means he'll just be banned for the Man the City, City friendly yeah. or yeah, whether he'll actually be banned for the start of the season. I don't yeah, know. No, it's rare, uh, rare to see a, a player sent off in a friendly, actually. I, I've never seen it from a West Ham player, anyway. Mm. Um yeah, what what did impress me? Um, I'm not going to touch on too many of the negatives, you know, poor defending because it's it's only a preseason game and they shirk the tackles a bit in preseason. But um, Tony Martinez, two and two now, and a wonderful goal. Really was mm. a wonderful goal uh, the way he took it. Um, yeah, is he sniffing? Is he sniffing now? <laughs> we ain't really got much choice, mate, at the yeah. moment. Um, but would you he... be happy? Would you be happy with him? Yeah, I mean, I'd like to see him given a chance. I'd still rather we signed another striker. Um, but no, I'm 100%. I'd be happy to see him given a chance because, you know, like you say, two and two. Took his goal really well. Um, did really well in the development squad last year. So, yeah, he seems to be he seems to be going in the right direction anyway. Yeah. No, I, I was like I said, really impressed. Um, we was calling on him a little bit towards the end of last year when we was desperate for a striker. He, he didn't get his chance at You've got to think that he might get a chance now. Mm. Uh, maybe in the cup games, we might see some of him and possibly against the lesser opposition, depending where we are in the league, really. But he's definitely a nice option to have. Um, you never know, he might link up well with Fernandez. That's what a lot of people on Twitter have been calling. Um, another one, obviously, I oh, got a goal. He's, again, he seems to be able to pick up goals. You know, Fox in the box, very good. A uh, little player at that, and I think he he's going to really progress this year as well mm. with the quality around him. Um, I, like I was calling yesterday, if, if Lanzini was on the pitch yesterday, I would love to have seen that whole link up of Anatovic, Lanzini, Ayu, and Hernandez at points definitely. Mm. Um, yeah. Anyway, the game finished three three. Not much really else to sort of say about it. It's just a fitness thing. Very impressed with Anatovic yet again. Got some amazing pass on him. Snodgrass. I don't honestly don't know what the man offers. I, I really don't. Awful, awful. Um, I mean, yeah. if you if you believe what you read, it sounds like we are trying to get rid of him, but no one wants to take his wages on. I mean, like it seems like we've made a massive mistake there. I, I, I don't know how much we we're paying him. I think it's sixty seventy. But and, uh, yeah, yeah, any what, club that's going to take him who can pay that. Uh, sorry, any club that can pay that are not going to take him. Mm, absolutely. Way of wording it, yeah. Um, some other things that have come out of friendlies recently, um, obviously Noble did pick up an injury and like fans have been celebrating the injury. Listen, I, I don't like Mark Noble, as you know, as a player, but celebrating an injury, really? Is that is that what you do now? No, it's poor form. Poor form. Like, you, it doesn't matter who the player is, you don't want to wish an injury on anyone. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's mm. their job at the end of the day. Um, and you don't want to, like... It's their job and their health, and you don't want to see you don't want to see that, and it's a shame to see that. You know, you can understand where people are coming from, but still, I, I mean, you know, if the other players are good enough to replace him, they'll replace him. It's as simple as that. You don't have to start hoping that players get injured and things like that. Yeah, no. Like I say, everyone knows my opinions on Mark on his channel, and I, I am not one to be sitting there celebrating. It's not it's not something you do, you know. Um, like I say, I, I like it. Uh, I, I'm trying. To, I'm going to try and word this properly. But it's like I'm half glad because I would have liked Mark to be dropped. I'm not glad that he's injured, 
but now it does give an opportunity to see the team that we've been wanting to see, basically. Uh, we do. There's loads of comments about this constant stat about how many games we've not won with Mark Noble. And this stat really winds me up because it's like, well, how many games have we won then? Like, give me that stat as well. Instead of going, oh, yeah, we, we don't win a game without Mark. It's not just one player that's going to make us win games, no? Like, that stat really winds me up. No, I agree. I agree. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's a bit of a pointless statistic, really. Um, I do think he has an effect on the team. He's not the best going forward. He's definitely got his place in certain games. But no, you're right. It is definitely time, like we've said so many times before in previous weeks. It's like we, we, there's other better options, in our opinion. Um, yeah, so, you know. But yeah, now we'll see it. Now we'll see, won't we? So we'll see now if everyone celebrating is right to celebrate. If we start really well, maybe we won't. Maybe our midfield will be terrible. It didn't look um, like it's... I think our attacking four now are fantastic. So obviously, Hernandez and then Ayu, um, Anatovic, Lanzini, and then possibly Antonio in there as well. Fantastic. It's what's behind them that I'm worried about. Yeah, it's um, that one that's sitting. It's them two that are sitting. Like mm. we did miss, we are missing Sheck at the minute as well. Um, obviously, he's he's got some injuries at the minute. Um, Obiang didn't look great yesterday, actually. Uh, if I'm going to make a point about pre-season again, just a pre-season game, but he didn't look great. Yeah, there was a lot of wayward passing. Fernandez did excellently when he came on, but he was playing. He was playing actually right wing. You remember he was calling that the other day. Come on, he was busting a gut down the right wing. I don't know what he was uh, doing. For their first goal, though, no, no, he was in the wall and he, like, he just ran away. I don't know what we, what was he doing, and unless yeah, there was, poor goal. poor goal, unless there was a player making a run that we couldn't see from that angle or something. I don't know, but I don't know why he just left the wall. It was weird, but still, anyway. Yeah, um, something that leads on continuing with the Mark Noble stuff. Um, we sort of half discussed it, but um, this sort of a continuation of it. Um, should he remain captain? Like we sort of said about whether he is a captain or not, but should he remain captain? Um, he will, regardless of what anyone thinks, he is going to remain captain. And yeah, I think he's a good club captain. Like I've said before, I think there's you can have two. You can have a, a club captain, and then you can have um, you know an on the pitch leader, uh, captain on the pitch. I think there's there's two roles to play there. And I th- yeah, I think Mark's a good club captain because obviously he knows the club. He's gonna he's gonna g people up, you know. He's he understands what it means to the fans. Do you know what I mean? More than yeah, most yeah. of the players on the team, he's definitely got a role. I agree with that. He, he's the closest thing to having a fan on the pitch. But pff, I don't know. Um, like you say, I don't know who I'd pick. Like I'd, I called Winston Reid last week, but then obviously you said you don't think he's got much of a mouth. Um, Zabalet is too too early for him. You know he's only been in the club a couple of weeks, but um, yeah, yeah, he will remain captain. So I don't think it's even worth sort of arguing really. Whether mm. he should or shouldn't is a different story, but he will, <laughs> and I think that's the key point. Um, someone who won't be replacing Mark Noble in midfield is Josh Cullen, who with Reece Burke has now gone on loan to Bolton. Um, what do you make on that? Does that now sort of even more scream? that Jack Wilshere will be coming in? Uh, I don't know if there's any indication of that, to be honest. I think it just it's just more, you know, we, we've got a lot of central midfielders, even if we don't sign anybody else like Wilshere. I still, it's the type of midfielder that we're missing, like you say, it's that holding defensive midfielder. But I don't know, obviously, I mean, it, it seems like they're, they've just decided they're not ready for the first team. Uh, it seems like um, Rice is probably going to get his chance this year. Um, Holland as well. Good. He looks good. He looks really good, Declan Rice. Mm. Very classy uh, ball player. Yeah, and I mean, I don't think... Holland as well. Yeah, Got yeah, Holland, yeah. Um, I, I can see them being ar- around the squad this year. And I think it just means if they're going to go, you know, to, to Bolton and they're going to play games and improve, then that's, that's a good thing, you know. It's a good thing. Yeah, no, like you say, Cullen is, uh, I think he's 21. And I have to I say, know. by the way, I like Cullen a lot. I'm a big, big fan of oh, Cullen. Yeah, yeah. And I do definitely see him potentially as Mark Noble's replacement long term. Yeah, yeah. But um, 
But um, yeah, it's like you say, he's only 21. Um, like I say, another season, or it's apparently five, six month loan, so that will take him to like Christmas. Um, yeah, another season, he could be ready. I think I think he could be nearly ready. You got to think, Mark Noble will be 31 this mm. time next year. So I think that will be the end. I think this will be sort of last sort of full on season for him this year, Mark. Mm. Um, yeah, and Burke, again, looks like a fantastic prospect. It would, like you say, it would seem that Rice is ahead of him now and even Oxford. So that'd be interesting to see. We, we won't keep all three, surely, going forward. But he, mm. You wouldn't have thought so. I mean, it's going to get, there's going to come a point where he's going to get fed up and he's going to turn around and say, listen, either I'm playing or I'm gone. Like, there's, there's going to be a time where that happens, which will probably be next season, to be honest. So I think it's a it's quite, it's a make or break season for him. I really do. Yeah, I think Ginge will be phased out this year because you got you got to suspect that it's Ginge's last year, no? Yeah, I mean, how old is he now? I think he will be thirty four. Yeah, I mean, you'd think so. Font as well, probably be looking well, to retire. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I mean, there's going to be spaces coming up in the squad. There's gonna there's going to be spaces for him. It's just whether they're good enough to step into them or not. Um, but no, I think you're right. Yeah, it could well be could well be Collins last year, Fonts last year. Um, but it's good that we've got these youth players potentially ready to step in. You know, it's good that they're there. We have got quite. It seems like we've got a decent crop of youth players at the minute. Yeah, and what do you make on that, uh, David Gold backtracking on his comments? I don't know if you see that. Where he's I didn't see that. No. Where- he goes, oh, now I think this is the greatest academy we've had in 10 years. All right. <laughs> <laughs> changed, changed very quickly. In like yeah, I mean, I don't really pay much attention to what David Gold says, to be honest. I don't think he knows what dad a week it is most of the time. <laughs> um, bless him. But, uh, yeah, you know. <laughs> but, yeah, I think I think he's realised what, what a silly comment that was a couple of weeks I'm back. Sure, I'm sure, I'm sure he, he sort of realised almost straight away, but... Um, it's good to see him maybe potentially back in the youth teams now, I suppose. It's, it's good to see. It. Well, at least he has turned around and changed his opinion. They've, they've done nothing wrong. Um, I know it's only pre-season. Again, I keep repeating myself. But from what I've seen, none of those youth players have done anything wrong mm. yet. And that's all they can do. They can only play who's in front of them. And they can only beat who's in front of them. So for me, they're doing a great job. And just hopefully they carry on. Um, I can't remember whether we mentioned this last week or not. So I've, I've written it down because I couldn't remember. Uh, Winston Reid, talking about defenders going. Um, Everton apparently made a cheeky £9 million bid for Winston. Uh, they can go and do one. £9 my... is an insult. I heard that they were interested. I didn't hear that they'd made a bid. Yeah, £9 but, million, but... that's an that's an absolute insult. Yeah. An insult one of the for Winston. Best, one of the best defenders outside the top six, I'm going to word mm. it as. He, for me, I know Lee has said it for years, walks into, you know, like a team like Arsenal that have been struggling for a good, decent centre half for years. Mm. He walks into an Arsenal team for me and Liverpool. He walks into oh, yeah. Liverpool's team. He's a player, I think, if he went to one of the top clubs, he would look world class uh, with though, with better players around him. He's a, he's a great player. Nine million is a joke. Um, I mean, if I, I, I wouldn't want to sell him, but if I was going to even consider it, uh, let's be realistic. It would have to be, say, sort of twenty-five million. I think it's twenty-eight. Me. Twenty-eight. I think. So yeah, you're gonna want at least twenty-five million in this inflated market. Market, you could push it to possibly thirty million. Mm. But uh, it's not the sort of thing we need to be doing. Uh, like Winston is sort of our rock, really, in defence, and I think you, you need to be keeping him out of any of the centre backs. He's the one I don't want to go. Mm. I think any of the others went. I could probably take it as on the chin. If Font went, even if Ogbonna went, I like Ogbonna, but even if he went, I, I could take it. It's just the amount of time that Reed's been at the club as well. He's been at West Ham a long time now. Oh, he's due his um, testimonial, I think, this next year. He would have yeah. been at the club 10 years next year. I'm sure it was 2008 he come. I might be wrong. It might be 2009. I have to check that. Um, in terms of coming in... Um, one name that's cropping up is I'm gonna let you pronounce it because I always get it wrong. That booty boozy or whatever you say. I don't know how to pronounce it either. I'll just say a booty boo. Booty boos. Booty boos. Booty booty boo. Booty boos from Montepello. Um, yeah, 
Um, most assists in Europe. Mm. Um, excellent player. A um, lot of people are saying he would be a, like a, the Payet replacement, basically, if we were to get a player of this calibre in. Well, Payet was the same. One of he was the most chances created in Europe when we signed him. Mm. So, uh, um, thirty million is the touted figure. Um, apparently linked to going to. I think it was Real Betis. I think I read. Um, and they're, they're apparently nervous that we're sniffing around there because surely, I don't know, are we a better proposition than Real Betis? That, they're about the same level as us over there, aren't they? I would say so, yeah. Um, it depends where he wants to go and play. I mean, you'd like to think, I mean, the Premier League is still a big draw. Um, you know, coming to play in the Premier League, Premier League money, London, you know, there's a lot. World Cup, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Algeria made the World Cup. I, I believe he's an Algerian, I think. I think he's... Uh, well, the videos I've watched, he looks like he's more Riyad Mahrez than Payet. Mm. But apparently he is a good free kick taker and stuff. Would be an excellent signing. Excellent signing. It's funny because we're being linked to, obviously, him. Uh, we're linked to um, uh, Balde, Dial, if anything's still going on with that. Um, so it definitely seems like we're still in the market for, you know, another winger. Um and they, they, it seems to be big, sort of quite a lot of quite expensive players that we seem to be looking at. It seems like if we do sign anybody else, we could well end up breaking our transfer record again. Yeah, it looks like it looks like they're looking to make another statement to me with another sort of, if not a statement, then it's going to be one of these big, hot young prospects in mm. world football, which would be which would be amazing if we if we can pull this off. Well, Neymar wants to go. He said yeah, he wants to leave. Literally, mate. The next thing on my notes is at Neymar. Um, obviously, it, it's the domino effect that could spiral from this. Now is why I've written Neymar. Um, obviously, not. It's not West Ham related, but can I just have your opinions on that, mate? One hundred and ninety-eight million is the rumored figure. It's it's a it's an insane figure. It's an insane figure. Um, obviously, it's his release clause. Um, but yeah, crazy, crazy, crazy money. Um, West Ham obviously bid for Neymar uh, before he went to yeah, Barcelona. Yeah, million. We came very close about ten years ago, I think it was. Yeah, be- before he went to Barcelona, when he when he was still playing over uh, in uh, Brazil, um, we had it. We had, uh, and apparently, I was reading articles recently again, actually, from that time, from when we had bid for him, and apparently he's. His family, his uncle and that, were saying no, they wanted him to come to West Ham. Can you imagine? Can yeah. you ima- but let's be really honest, right? If Neymar had come to West Ham, we would have ruined him. Yeah, yeah. Would he have become the player that he is now? No. 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 You know, but uh, yeah, incredible money. Unbelievable. You can only imagine what sort of money they'd be paying him each week. Yeah, well, they're rumoured to 600 grand a week. <laughs> like China money. Frightening. Frightening. But, um, yeah, completely. Like when you think Pogba, the current most expensive player in the world, was 100 million. Neymar's just topped him by 100 million. Mm. Although well, it's not even like 20 million, it's 100 million on top. And that's, Pogba was massively overpriced. In my, and like, in my opinion, Neymar is, is in a different league to Pogba, yeah. ability wise. He's, he's easily one of the best players in the world. Yeah, and uh, I can understand why he's leaving as well. Um, uh, Joanne Cruyff, the great Joanne Cruyff, made a comment that. Sometimes you can't have two stars in a team. You like if he wants to go on and be win the Ballon d'Ors and all that, he needs to go and be the star of the show by himself. He's not going to win it with Messi there. Mm. Whoever you are, no one overshadows Messi at the moment. Similar to how Messi had to wait his turn with, until Ronaldinho sort of packed up, is it? Mm. Um, yeah, obviously Neymar going there could lead to Coutinho going there uh, to Barca, and then that obviously leaves Lanzini open. To the Liverpool rumours, that that's the fear I'm, I've got now. Um, yeah, but um, what my main issue was on this is the financial fair play thing. Um, it was a question that was given to us saying about what is financial fair play. But do we even still understand it? So, as far as my understanding goes, so the you can only you can only increase your wages, your wage spend by a certain amount each year unless you get external money coming in 
right? So say sponsorship money, whatever, prize money, uh, then that allows you to, to spend more. My understanding is because of the new Sky deal, financial fair play is basically irrelevant. Like that, the, the Sky deal was pumped so much money into clubs as external, say not sponsor, like sponsorship, whatever. Um, it's, it's practically impossible now for any English club to hit the financial fair play limit. So that's kind of irrelevant now. It doesn't really matter anymore. Yeah. Uh, the actual question was from Kevin Day. I hope that answered your question, Kevin. He wanted to know about uh, will Lanzini go to Liverpool, explain the financial fair play rules, and does it only apply to English clubs? <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, I, like I say, I don't know much about it. I've heard rumours that, you know, that Qatar are doing something that they're paying Neymar 300 uh 300 million to represent them so he can pay out buy up his contract so it hasn't actually come from PSG you know like it's, it sounds very corrupt but mm. uh, yeah that that is the rumours on that one um, uh, yeah like I say interesting one um, great to see uh, I don't know why he's going PSG to be honest with you I'd like to have seen him go to come here really yeah it's I would love, the money, love to have seen him come in uh, there's rumours that uh Gareth Bale may be coming back as well, so that'd be that'd be nice to see as well. See, uh, when, when Man United bought Pogba, they should have bought Bale. They should have bought Gareth Bale when they bought that Pogba. To Man United fans in work, they should have gone all out for Gareth Bale, hundred percent, or Griezmann, one of the two. Mm. Um, yeah, that's it really for topics. Is there anything else that sort of you can think of that needs to be covered this week? Uh, um, apart from uh, the great Colton Cole. Oh, yes, yes. I did have that in my notes. I can't believe I missed that. Uh, yeah, Colton, um, what's happened? He's... Been, well, apparently he's been sacked for being rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> never, never. I can't, I can't imagine that. I, I, I mean, I don't know. Bring him home. That's what I say. Bring him home. Yeah. Bring bring Colton home. I, I, I'm not even, like, obviously we're joking all the time about Colton. I, I love Colton Cole, but, you know, he's he, he's not the best player in the world. Joking aside, in all seriousness, I would love to see him come back to the club. I would. Obviously, I don't want to see him being our first choice or even second or third choice striker, but I'd love to see him back at the club. I really would. Like, let bring him on as a sort of player coach, you know, let him be sort of fourth choice or something. I, 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 he's not even probably good enough to be a coach, but I don't care. I just love... It's a shame, but like, again, you're probably aware of it as well. Like, Jose said that this is one of the best youngsters he's ever seen. Mm at mm. the time at Chelsea and then I don't know just for me again this is going to hurt some West Ham fans ears I do apologise but for me he, he stole a career in football um, I think that's unfair no I mean what Colton was what there were what? flashes of brilliance don't get Col me wrong what was Colton for us what was his record he was what one in three one in four no, I... never he was I bet you he was never I bet you hang on this I, I'm oh. going gonna, I'm gonna to have to oh, check oh. it out because he look at that period under um, Zola, he was fantastic. Got called up for England, played for England. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll give you that. I don't. I remember a fantastic goal he scored against Tottenham. Uh, but then he set up Jermaine Defoe to score an equaliser about two minutes later as well. Um, <laughs> playing yeah. in the snow. That's my my fondest memory. What one? When he was playing in the snow. Oh yeah. I remember uh, a great goal he scored against Wigan actually as well. I'll give him that as well. A, like, a real pass and movie one. Right, I'll tell you. So for West Ham, he yeah. pl he played... Sorry, I'm trying to find it now. Uh, he played 293 games and scored 68 goals. 68. That's about it's one in four. 4.5. It's less than that. Divide it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry guys, math lessons. Yeah, it's about 1.43. It's 4.3. 4. 4. Oh, look, look at that. Look, Luke don't work in a school, does he? So, right, so <laughs> one in four, that's not the worst that's striker a, we've ever that's had. A, that's a standard striker. One, in, one in four in the Premier League, that's not disastrous. That's not bad no, at no, all. No, that's, that's a, it's a not standard. stealing a living. I would say that's expected. Yeah. That's expected. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so that, that's Colton, sadly. Um, um, I think you should get down your next T-shirt, Paul, actually. Like, <laughs> bring Colton home or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. 
there was something else. I cannot remember what it was, though. I do apologise. Um, let's move on to the questions. Maybe it'll come back to me um, when I'm thinking about it. Um, oh, actually, that was it. I remember now. There you go. Just before we go into the questions, I want to do a little preview of the Man City game, um, just to say like what we sort of expect. Um, what are you expecting, Man City? Big game. Uh, I'm expecting to see the the side that he's going to potentially put out against Manchester United. Mm. Yeah, I, I, that's what I'd like. I, to be honest, I'm a bit disappointed he hasn't been doing that already. I would have liked to have seen him putting out his first choice team for this last, you know, couple of weeks um, to get them used to playing with each other. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I really hope so. The last thing you want is to go into the first day of the season and, you know, players still getting used to playing with each other. So yeah, I hope so. I hope so. I still think it's going to be treated very much as a friendly. I don't think it's going to be, I don't think we stand much chance of winning, to be honest. No, no. Um, um, we haven't mentioned your man on your top, though, Paul, actually. Um, I've just remembered that from that game last uh, the other night. Um, what did you make of him? He came on, he, he had about 12 minutes, and he needed to score an hat-trick. Different <laughs> class. Different yeah. class. He's, like, compared to what we've had to watch the last couple of years, absolute different class. I mean, the, the movement, fantastic. I mean, up, to be honest, if I was being critical, he probably should have scored at least two. At least two he should have scored. And he didn't. Um, possibly could have got a penalty. Um, he, he played a lovely ball through for Fernandez as well, who put it wide. Good vision. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to see him kick on and play the scene properly. And like you say, that that link up with Lanzini could be very, very special. Very special. What I did like as well, you just touched on it with the penalty. This uh, penalty thing. It's a friendly, but did you see the anger and aggression when he didn't get the penalty? Mm. Like, he's a winner, and that, that's the difference as well. This, he's a ruthless, and what you need to be as a striker, greedy, hungry, angry. Like, mm. We've not had a striker like that for a long time, a real angry striker. Yeah, um, that's it. Questions. So, as we say, there's not much really to cover at the moment, but... Literally, next week, season preview, and then we're going to start talking about bloody football again. <laughs> we're actually going to start talking about matches. Probably the, the show after the Man United game is going to be, yeah, we got spanked 4 0, that's the season over already, but <laughs> we'll see. Um, okay, let's start off with Sarif. Why are we letting Fagudi leave but keeping Snodgrass at the club? Well, well because uh, we sort of touched on it earlier, no one wants to buy Robert Snodgrass. Um, <laughs> That's pretty much what it comes down to. I'd much rather keep Faguli and sell Snodgrass, but the reality is, you know, this ain't football manager. If no one wants to pay him, there's not a lot you can do. It, it, I mean, I don't know how long we signed him for. I'm guessing we put him on a three-year contract. Hopefully it was only three years. Three to four, I think. Um, it wouldn't surprise me at all to see him sit and just see out them. He awful as well. He just looked awful. Even in the pre-season, like, again, I'm repeating with the pre-season, pre-season, but... Like, last night we was playing a fourth-tier German team. Mm. Mate, you couldn't beat a player. Mm. I don't even get, like... At their level, a Premier League player, it should be like they're playing in the park against, like, kids, you know, like where you just used to twist up, like, the, <laughs> the little kids and that. Uh, I don't know. I can't see him going there. I can't. Unless a championship come, comes in with a little bit of ambition, possibly. I mm. can't see him going anywhere. Maybe Scotland. He might go up to Scotland, perhaps. I don't, I, I don't know. I can't see anyone paying his wages. And, you know, but still, let's let's not write him off anyway. On the other hand, let's not write him off completely. You know, he might come on. Let's see how he gets on until January. He might do really, really well. You know, let's give him a chance. Let's, let's give him a chance. I don't want to see us start the season on players' backs straight away. Do you know what I mean? I'd hate no, to see that. No, let's give everyone a fresh slate yeah. as you and see how we get on. Uh, KD, do you think Hernandez played good in the game against uh, Alatono? We sort of just touched on that. Uh, I hope we've answered that for you, Kieran. Um, and do you think the club is going up from here with the signings we have made? So, yeah, Hernandez touched on that already. Thought he played brilliant in that 10 mm. minutes. Uh, like Paul said, fantastic movement. Should have had, not should have, could have had three goals. Uh, in terms of, are we going up as a club? Uh, yeah, I'd like to think so. I would like to think so. Mm. But we can't judge it until we've seen him play in the Premier League. It's a whole different ball game. 
once you start playing that Premier League. Yeah. Crystal Palace, you could have said Crystal Palace went in with massive intent last year with the signings they made, but it didn't work out on the pitch. Yeah, hundred percent agree. Hundred percent agree. It's too early to say. It looks like it. It looks like it. It looks like we're going in the right direction. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to see how we do. If we defend in the Premier League like we have done pre season, we'll be relegated by Christmas. Nice. Um so yeah, we'll we'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Um I'm gonna steer the question from a video I watched on West Ham Fan T V that sort of half inspired me a little bit. Um do you think, Paul, this is a question that uh, someone asked West Ham Fan TV, do you think, as fans, we owe the board an apology for this summer? No. No. <laughs> I, I, I totally agree with you, mate. It, it's a no for me as well, because... It they're was doing what they're they, supposed to this do. This is their apology. It's, but, yeah, I mean, they're, all they're doing is what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to buy good players. Why, why are we supposed to apologise? They, if they should have done it last year, if they'd have done what they've done this year, last year, like we said last week, where would we be now? You know, like, no, why, why apologise for what? I don't, I don't know. Like, they're, they're just doing what they're supposed to do. Yeah. So, well done, you know, fair play. They've made good signings, but that's what they're supposed to do. That's their job. That's right. Like I say, I don't think the fans owe them any apology. I think it, this is more their apology to us mm. to say we're really sorry for last summer for sort of se- selling you a pipe dream. Uh, but here we go. This hopefully will uh, give us a good chance this year. Mm. That's all we want. Just want a yeah. chance to compete with the big boys. Uh, Alfredo, Martinez or Carroll in the cup games? I'd love to see Tony or oh, Anthony. <laughs> Play as well, games. yeah. I don't know I, how many games Paul's mate Andy's going to play, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, you know, I've, I've made my thoughts clear on Andy Carroll many, many times on this channel. Uh, if you haven't seen him, yes, on his day, he's unplayable, but he don't have his day enough. You know, he really don't. Uh, we can't rely on him. And it's time, I've been saying for years, you know, it's time to let him go. We need to let him go. And 100%, I'd rather see someone like Martinez, an upcoming prospect, get game time and improve than wait for another Carroll injury. Yeah. Another thing, uh, again, on Carroll, again, just a video I remember watching West Ham Fan TV this week. What do you make of Andy Carroll being pictured, apparently out in Magaluf, this, uh, I think it was last week, like on the on the beers till like three, four in the morning, supposed to be recuperating, ready for the season so he can be ready like sort of three, four games in. What do you make of that? Is that sort of like a sort of, I don't know, disrespect to the fans and the club? Like, yeah, it is. People, I mean, people say off season, but it's pre season now. And he's, and he's apparently currently injured. So if he, he, what he should be doing is he should be doing everything he can to get fit. Hmm. Um, first of all, it, is it definitely true? You know, second of all, I haven't seen the pictures. So was what, is he just on holiday or was he out getting tanked up? I don't no, know. It, the picture is apparently it's, uh, was taken last week and it's, uh, I say apparently, apparently it's definitely true sort of thing. It's not even an apparent, uh, he was out in Mallorca, like out six, seven, eight o'clock in the morning, you know, all night out. Really drunk, etc. I mean, that's I can't say I'm surprised because he seems like he's got form for it. He's done it before when he's been injured, he's been out pictured on the lash. And yeah, I mean, it is it's unprofessional, it's, it's yeah. unprofessional. I don't think well, that's not a, recuperating, is it? <laughs> no, it's not. As a professional athlete, having beers, mate, but um, you know, it's uh, he probably knows himself that his career is over. Do you know what I mean? He probably knows that. He's never going to be fit to play a decent run of games, so you know I don't know I don't know if he even cares. I think um, I think Billich has even mentioned it himself before that Carroll, like the, the professionalism ain't there in training, and he doesn't care. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm almost sure Billich just says something along those yeah, lines. Yeah, anyway. I remember him saying something about like doesn't look after his body and mm. you know the eating the kebabs and drinking ten pints or whatever that will eventually catch up with him and that's maybe what is happening now. Yeah, don't get me wrong, Geezer on his day is fantastic but he doesn't have enough of them days. Uh, James on Twitter, if you could have the life 
wife and money of any professional footballer, who would it be? Ooh, great question. This is a, that's really interesting, actually. Right, so wife, I don't know. Honestly, I can't say I know any footballer's Lionel wives. Lionel Messi's wife. Who? Lionel Messi's wife. I don't know what she looks like. I've never, I, I've no idea. <laughs> but I believe she's probably, I'm sure, I'm sure she's amazing. Um, the life, so the money, obviously it's got a bit, well, what about Neymar now, Ronaldo, Messi? Yes, yeah, so whoever's earning the most. But as far as the life, I'd rather have the life of like someone who's not in the spotlight, someone who's more low profile. Do you know what I mean? Give me the money of Messi and Ronaldo, but give me the, like, someone out of the spotlight. Yeah. Um, yeah, in terms of, like, like player, perhaps, maybe I would like to be someone, perhaps, like a, you know, like, not so much a Palo, because Palo's too prestige, but, you know, like, um, someone at West Ham who's, who's loved by the fans, the love of my own mm. fans, and you have that affiliation with them, but um, yeah, but if you had to pick one, then one that could have the whole package that that's out there at the moment, or so, like you could say, like I'd love to be David Beckham, but then I wouldn't want to be David Beckham. I wouldn't want all that photos all the time and that constant intrusion. Yeah. Jimmy uh, Bullard, there you go. <laughs> he goes and does soccer AM on the yeah, weekends. He's a, mess about, <laughs> he's a millionaire. He's loved by all fans. <laughs> yeah. I would like to look like him though. <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. No. Maybe come back to it. We'll come back. <laughs> to it. Not Del Piero, no. Huh? Well, he's like, all right, then yeah, I'll be retired and a millionaire. That's fine. <laughs> Although the thing is, is like, I don't know how much money he earned in his day, but it's nothing compared to what players oh, earn now. You, you can imagine what he would be on now. Jesus it's Christ. Crumb. It'd yeah, but it's criminal. If you think like what, what his contract was, probably at Juventus in his prime. What we, he was probably on something like fifty grand a week, and that would oh, have been what considered I was a say, lot. Like, you got to think that, that, like Roy Keane was the first fifty grand a week player, weren't he, in the Premier League? So yeah, probably Dell was on about that sort of money. And then you think like people like Paul Gascoigne only, I repeat, only earned about ten grand a week. I think was his biggest contract when he was at Lazio. It's mad. I don't, I don't know how he survived. <laughs> no, no, I don't know. Did he put food on the table for his kids? <laughs> um, Liam. If you were a manager, would you gamble playing a youthful team, aka Alex Ferguson, in the nineties, or go with Billick's experienced style team? There's got to be a mix in there, really. I think uh, there there has to be a mix. I think it's silly going completely one way or the other. Yeah, no. Uh, in today's age, yeah, it's all about getting that mix. Um, and you got to think those youngsters at Manchester United, they were elite youngsters. You know, some of the best probably the best that's ever come out of the Premier League, to be honest with you. Um, this, uh, next one. Martin Gales, why does Snodgrass look like an extra from Game of Thrones? <laughs> I don't know. I've never really took any notice of it, to be honest. And I don't really watch Game of Thrones. Am I criminal for not watching no, it? No, you're missing out, mate. You are yeah. genuinely missing out. It's, it's amazing. Unbelievable. I, I actually got into it really late. And then it's honestly, mate, one of the best programs I've ever seen. You need to watch it. But uh, was... Snodgrass, it's just a beard, isn't it? He's got a beard, that's it. I don't know. Um, <laughs> another question, quite a funny one. Um, have any of you guys kissed a female woman? Um, I didn't know there was male women, to be honest, mate. <laughs> so I don't know where that question comes from. Um, Paul's married. I'm getting married next year. And Lee's celebrating his second anniversary as we speak. So, um, yeah, I don't know where But yeah, if I, if I am going to kiss a woman, it's definitely female. <laughs> 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 yeah, um, yeah. I don't know what women you know, mate. Or um, I would have a little check up of all your past history, perhaps. Um, Toby, what do you eat for breakfast on a match day? Hmm. I don't know. I'd like a McDonald's breakfast on my way down sometimes. Yeah, I mean, that's, I suppose if you were getting sank in the morning, like on the way, otherwise it's just a normal breakfast, isn't it? What do you eat for breakfast, Luke? Shreddies. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I like Cocoa Pops myself. Yeah, that's a weird question. Um, <laughs> Sarif, again, is Snodgrass the Scottish Matt Jarvis? Great question. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's going that way, isn't it? Like, Jarvis was shocking. But even then, I'd say Jarvis probably had more of an impact on games than Snodgrass has. Well, at least Jarvis scored a goal. He 
scored you know, a goal uh, in the uh, League Cup against Tottenham, I remember. His final ball was shocking, but at least he managed to get to the byline every now and again. Do you know what I mean? Another one that come with a massive reputation, Jarvis, as well, when he came over. Yeah, well, it was a statistical one, wasn't it? It was how he made the most crosses in the league and all the rest of it. And everyone was like, oh, imagine Andy Carroll on the end of that. But then when we saw it ourselves, yeah, he might have made loads of crosses, but they were shocking. He just, he never looked Blood. up. He never looked up. He just, he just ran as fast as he could with his head down and then just kicked it. Like, yeah. it was a terrible, terrible player. And then he put his little thumbs up. <laughs> Ron Gibbons, common theme with these questions today. Is Snodgrass really a footballer? I feel I feel bad for Robert Snodgrass. I hope you don't watch this show. Yeah, I know. Yeah, there's, there's loads, <laughs> there's loads going for him today. Um, well, let's yeah, let's say he's... let's say let's say this right. So he's been bad for West Ham, but don't forget he had a fantastic first half of the season last year. He was Hull's best player. He's not. He's obviously not terrible. He's obviously not a terrible footballer. It just hasn't happened at West Ham. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, yeah, I think I actually told you a couple of weeks ago, Paul, I found a Facebook status I put on about seven years ago. So it's about 2010 when he was at Leeds. And it actually read, OK, West Ham, now you've sold so-and-so. I can't remember who it was at the time. Go out and get Snodgrass and Max Gradle. So mm-hmm. at the time, I really did like Snodgrass a few years ago. And it, again, I was excited when we signed him because he was one that I've always wanted. But it just hasn't worked out. I think that's... The best way of summing it up, it just hasn't worked out. Mm. Um, AJ, how do you like your eggs in the morning? I like mine done to the side, or whatever the song is. <laughs> I don't know what the song is. Uh, I, I like scrambled eggs. Oh, yeah? Uh, no, just a standard fried egg, good fried egg, with a with a hard yolk. Don't like runny yolks. Oh, well, There's a lot of breakfast. Gr- I'm getting hungry now. Yeah, I know, yeah. Um, next question from... Ed, favourite computer game of all time? Oh, that's a tough one. Tough well, one. I know I'll bring out the geek in me here, uh, but it's Final Fantasy VII, probably. Yeah. Final Fantasy VII for all the older people, like PS One. Wow, yeah. amazing! Like if if you're a gamer, then you know. If you're not, you're probably thinking, "Look at these sad," <laughs> you know. Uh, but yeah, Final Fantasy VII or Mass Effect Two, amazing games, amazing games. Yes, I'm a massive geek. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I quite liked Arkham Asylum Batman and Red Dead Redemption um, next one Ian Acho has it has now been announced that he has a 50 million buyback clause should we go back in for him now we know it, or and it also says and did we make a mistake buying an out of it well definitely 100% no on the second part we, I don't think we, de- we made a mistake buying an out of it um, 50 million buyback yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd be happy to, to go in for him again. Um, I think the longer the window goes on, the more chance we'd have as well. Yeah, yeah, I think 50 million buyback is not bad, actually. Um, and if Man City were going to buy him back, that would mean he's had a sensational career at West Ham. Um, mm. it, it can only mean good things if, if we were to, to sell him. Um, next question. Um, have you guys seen this? I haven't. I haven't. It's um. I think you do you recognise that, Paul? Obviously, I know that is the chip shop near where old Upton Park used to be. Uh-huh. It's obviously, Upton Park's there. Um, yep. But yeah, a fantastic mural of Billy and Sir Trev. Yeah, it's amazing. I, I, I actually looking forward to going back down to East London to see that when I go back to work in September. Um, yeah, lovely. That was from Stephen. Um, um, okay. Nibbles is the next question, Paul. Um, what was the last furry thing you touched? The last what? Furry thing you touched. Furry. Um, My cat. <laughs> yeah, probably, um, I don't know, dressing gown or something like that. <laughs> I don't know. That's a t- I can't think of furry things. God knows. Um, who would you love to punch in the face? Frank Lampard. Yeah, Wayne Rooney. Perhaps an Wayne, old boss. I, I used to, I used to hate Wayne Rooney, but uh, that hate's died away. But Frank, Fat Frank, can't, mm. I can't stand it. I genuinely hate that man's face. I hate his face. I hate looking at him. I hate, I hate him talking. I hate everything about him. I hate. I don't like Richard Keys either because he hates West Ham. Richard oh, Keys. I just, yeah, no, Fat Frank. I'd love to. I'd love to lamp. <laughs> to lamp. Some of these questions are just so funny this week. Do you like Marmite? 
No. 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 <laughs> um, and, Nibble, and Nibbles carries on these last question. Thank you, Nibbles, for like summing it up into four questions. What is the meaning of life? 42. <laughs> if that, That's a reference you'll either understand or you won't. <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand. I can't say I understand that one. Uh, Nibbles again. Uh, do you think Billich will play Declan Rice this season? Um, it looks that way, mate. Um, I can't say I'm in the know and know what Billich plans are, but it certainly looks that way. He's done nothing wrong in the games that he's played. Um, looks like a real steady ball player. It looks like he might even play a CDM role. With it. Maybe he could be the one that's replacing Mark. Yeah, possibly. Um, I see a couple of people talking about that, actually. And uh, it's it seems... Um... Like what? What they are saying is, it's good to play the kids in that sort of uh, CDM role because then it doesn't leave them as exposed as if they're playing centre back. You know, when they're mo- making that move into the first team, if they're playing that CDM role, it gets them used to playing in in the sort of playing with the big boys. But they've got that cover behind them, so you know it doesn't. If they do make a mistake, it doesn't ruin their confidence, and there's there's help behind them. And I think that's probably. The reason, and then obviously, you know, if if uh, if a young player comes in and shines in that position, absolutely, then uh, let them let them carry on. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I think we'll see uh, some of Declan this year. Uh, Adam Leverhead, if you could wash any West Ham player's boots, who would it be? <laughs> I wouldn't want to wash any, to be honest. No, not unless they're giving them to me. You know, like say, if, I don't know, say if it was like Chikorito was like, oh, if you wash them, you can take them home and put them on eBay. If you want. <laughs> <laughs> uh, James, again, do you think the seating will ever be closer to the pitch? And do you really think it will make a massive difference as the roof keeps the atmosphere alive if the crowd has something to cheer about? So it would make an absolutely massive difference to be closer to the pitch. Will it ever happen? I don't know. Um, not with the Dave's in charge because the amount of money it would take would be unbelievable. The amount of money it would take, you might as well build a new stadium. Uh, we would need to literally gut... Rip the bits out. Yeah, we'd need to take gut the, the entire stadium and rebuild it. Um, so it's unlikely, if I'm being honest. Unless we do end up getting taken over by some, you know, Saudi multi-billionaire, maybe, but it's, it's unlikely. Um, SB... What is your current favourite song? Um, I can't get bell bottoms from John Spencer's Blue Explosion out of my head. Lots by Stormzy as well. <laughs> I don't know. I don't really have a favourite song to be honest. Like I, I listen to a lot. Of, like I'm a DJ, so I listen to lots and lots of music. Um, and to be honest, a lot of the songs that are popular in the charts because I have to play them all the time. I'm getting sick of them. Um, I don't know. I don't really have. I don't really have a favourite song. I've been listening to a lot of uh, sort of old school Eminem in the car recently. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. You got a favourite song? Um, at the moment, I don't, I don't mind that song. Don't act like you know me, like you know me. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't Jack, mind that one. That's Jack, Jack of, Jones. Um, yeah, dum 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 dum. Yeah, it reminds me of the like old funky ass days. It is. It's a sample of um, Toka Disco Body Language. So there yeah. you go. Um, James again uh, quick question we sort of half touched on this uh, now Colton has been sacked for not scoring any goals should we get him in as a striker or even staff somehow yes well open arms like that yeah. open like, arms come back Colton come back Colton <laughs> you're welcome anytime <laughs> <laughs> um, question from John Top five movies. I've got, I'll do this one because there's a couple more West Ham ones after. Top five movies. Very quickly, I'm going to go Bush, Ghostbusters, Back to the Future, Wolf of Wall Street, um, I don't know, Goodfellas. Mm, I don't know. For me, oh, Jurassic Park. For me, easily top three are uh, Rocky, Goodfellas. Oh, Rocky. Yeah, Rocky, Goodfellas, and uh, Romeo and Juliet, the DiCaprio one. Uh, and then I suppose, yeah, Back to the Future and Ghostbusters have to make the top five. Oh, The Matrix as well needs to be in there, though. Mm, that's difficult. I'm going to I'm gonna drop Back to the Future for The Matrix, and we'll keep Ghostbusters. Yeah. 
there's some great ones out there. It's too hard to discuss. I could probably make a whole podcast on films because <laughs> I, I could put in your Fight Clubs, your Prestige. There's some Inceptions, a great film as well. There's, t- there's so many. There are so so many. Um, Matthew, who replaces Lanzini? Uh, should he get injured or lose form? Formation change or swapping with Snodgrass slash Arnie? It's a good question. Um, that is a good question. I mean, I don't know. There's, I don't, that, that is a really good question. I mean, who else have we got who is that sort of creative? I get. I guess IU probably could play there, um, sort of just behind the striker. He's obviously a different player to Lanzini, but he could play there. I think Kanatovic can play there as well. Um, but I don't think there's there's not really a direct like for like replacement in the squad. Yeah, that real, you know, that little. I, I like use the tricky word little player. Yeah. Yeah, like. Because, you know, like, he reminds me a bit of... He could go on to be, like, a Nobby Solano sort of player. Mm. You know, a real tricky little player. Again, the only thing I feel he really needs to work on Lanzini, and again, it's the whole team in general, is that killer ball. We, we haven't got that killer ball at the minute. We really haven't. I know you said Chikorito played in a great ball the other night. But, um, yeah, we need someone who's got, boom, killer ball. Like, just don't think about it. Don't do 600 Scott Parker turns and then pass the ball. Mm. And the moment's gone... It, it's, it's that brain wavelength as well. It's just yeah. that boom. And out of it, it looks like he might have it, actually, to be fair. Um, Lewis E. Uh, sorry, Lewis John E. Who do you think win the league and who is your bottom three? Sorry, mate, I didn't catch that. It says, who do you think will win the league and who is your bottom three? I think Man City's going to win the league. Um, I've backed Chelsea again. Um, just because they're just so well set up. Conte is an amazing manager. Um, bottom three is difficult. I, I mean, you think just, Huddersfield uh, are probably yeah, gonna, Huddersfield yeah, going to be down there. Um, right. Mm. I but think I, it, you could see the end of maybe I don't know, like a what? And that's how Tony Pulis is West Brom, and he so they ain't going down. You might see the end of Palace this year. Hmm. Someone like Palace could go, I think. They've just sort of continuously like half flirted with it, aren't they, all the time, Palace? Um, you don't know what sort of Newcastle's going to turn up. They've not spent much money, Newcastle. No. So I, I reckon, see, you say Brighton. I reckon Brighton, actually, I reckon they'll do all right. Mm. Newcastle, I mean, I don't know, Benitez... Mm, I don't know, I don't know. It's a, it's a tough one to call, I think. I think it always is, though, bottom... Like picking a bottom three because realistically, let's be honest, any one of really sort of ten teams could be down there. It really just depends on how, how your season starts and yeah. and how uh, it in goes. Terms, in terms of winning as well, if the rumours are true that Gareth Bale may go to Manchester United this summer, then I think that throws them straight into the hat if Gareth Bale was to go there. But again, I don't think it will happen this summer. Maybe next summer. But if it mm. did, they're definitely right in there. That that takes them to that next level uh, he also goes on to say also Slav has the tools uh, also now Slav has the tools uh, do you think he can deliver at least a top nine finish um, I think he's going to have to if he wants an extension he's, he's going to have to I think with the with the first 11 that we've got now we need to be aiming for Europe in my opinion we need to be we need to be or we need to be pushing that top six yeah, an automatic qualification for the Europa League would be nice. Not qualification mm. and having to go out to Astro Gugu again. Um, next question. If you could put any of today's, any any one player from today's squad in the 2006 FA Cup final team to try and help us seal the victory we deserved, who would it be? Ginger Collins to put his body on the line when that shot comes flying in from Steven Gerrard. <laughs> there yeah. you go. Pause there, you can still see the raw emotion. Heart, heartbreaking, heartbreaking, <laughs> absolutely heartbreaking. I, I've never watched it back the game. Um, couldn't just can't face it. I just, I'll, I'll, I'll never forget that goal going in as well. Just absolute. And as soon as it, as soon as that goal went in, I knew, and I think everyone around me knew that was it. Maybe you that should was, do a blog on that. That would be an interesting blog. That yeah, I, I will do. Oh, I will do. Um, that would be but, a good blog. That. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. Um, it was just, just the way that it happened. 
I don't know if if the if it was preventable. I wish someone had just completely taken out Gerard completely. He was hobbling around like he was injured. I wish someone had just completely smashed him and took him off the pitch. But <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, Ginger's a decent chap. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, I, I always slate the guy, but maybe Mark Noble would have been a good one to pass the ball backwards for ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dilton, uh, his real name's Dave. He says, "Dave here. Do you think Martinez should be given a chance as a fourth striker? He could learn a lot from the great man, Javi Hernandez. Uh, we've sort of discussed this all the way through the show, Dave. Um, yeah, Martinez should definitely be given a chance next year. I'm not saying he's a starter." But uh, definitely should be getting 10, 15 minutes here and there, you know, if we're losing. Even if we're winning. Sometimes it's better to come on if you're winning. If you're winning like two, three nils, bring him on. Not that West Ham win two, three nil. But uh, <laughs> if we are ever in that position, maybe he might get a little sniff. Um, uh, James, Chikorito is a world-class striker. Could we actually see a year like the 15-16 bowling season? The man really excites me. It's possible. Yeah, of course we could. I mean, he's... I, I really don't know. I do not know how this season's going to go. I mean, yeah, we absolutely... We could see uh, We could see a season where we're absolutely flying. Looking at... Again, it's only pre-season. You, just, you can't really judge anything on it. But if we carry on the way we have in pre-season, we could be scraping around the bottom of the table. Mm. Anything could happen. We're, we're not going to know until we're a few games in, I don't think. Yeah, well... Even with Hernandez, um, I, I'm going to be a pessimist there. Even if Hernandez got, let's say, 17 goals, we could still ship two goals a game mm. and, and and be down there. Yeah. You know, like, we, we've seen it happen. Ravinelli, people like that, when they was at Middlesbrough, top goal scorer, and they still went down. Um, okay, there's a few questions here from um, Scandinavian Hammers. I actually answered... Uh, um, a little blog for them, but I'm going to use our question, use the questions they asked me, and ask them to you, Paul, because my answers are already on the internet. Um, they say, "What is the best West Ham game you have ever seen?" Talked about it before, many times. As far as experience goes, it was uh, Tottenham uh, in the cup. I don't know what year it was, um, but Stuart Pearce. It was the. Uh, the vlog that I've just done, that I've just published, the 2000-2001 season. There you go, 2000-2001, that Stuart Pearce free kick. Just just, just what a moment. Um, what a game. Just the the passion in the stadium. I don't know if I've ever felt that again. Um, yeah, unbelievable, unbelievable. Yeah, so there you go. Uh, My one was... Um, it, that that was very close to being the one, but it, for me, it was the Tottenham away, the three 0 game, just unbelievable. The noise, the the goal from Ravel Morrison, just unbelievable day in general. Uh, the next question they asked me was, which team do you hate the most? <laughs> is it the obvious, or is there a few? Yeah, I mean, no, it, it probably is Tottenham. To be honest with you, um, I, I hate Tottenham. I, I do. I hate Tottenham, but I hate Jose Mourinho more. <laughs> I can't yeah. stand Mourinho, uh, which means I think now he's a I'm man now, so I haven't got much like hate for him anymore. Which I'm I'm kind of hating uh, uh, Man United as well. But um, yeah, Tottenham, Tottenham. Uh, another question they asked: uh, Did you uh, did you used to have any pre-match rituals before you used to on a match day? Um. No, not really. To be honest, not really. Um, used to used to get to the ground pretty early. I know Lee's probably the same. Um, used to get to the ground pretty early. I liked standing in the ground and sort of, you know, watch it fill up. Um, read a program if I bought one. But no, not really. Not really. No, what about I, yourself? I what was your answer? No, I, I said um, the same. Like um, obviously, especially now traveling down from Benfleet, I don't really get the time to go and do the drinking and stuff. Like when you're over. Yeah, by all means, we'll go down, we'll have a good drink and make a good day of it. But um, no, Leah, I like to be in the ground, you know, getting the atmosphere, getting all the smells and all that stuff. Like, I, I, I go there to watch football. That's the main sort of thing of the day. Um, we've already sort of half answered that one. Uh, last question from them is, fourth place in the league or the FA Cup title? Um, we've dis- we discussed this, didn't we, a couple of years ago? We have talked about this, yeah. Yeah. Um, 
I'm going to give my answer that I give first and see whether you agree. The answer I give them was, I would love the FA Cup, but it's amazing, yes. Um, it's a trophy in the cabinet, bloody, 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 bloody. But fourth place is so crucial. Um, if we would have got that that last year at the bowling, where would we be as a club? Pyatt would probably be, still be in a West Ham shirt and the signings would Lacazette have come, mm. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I, and for me, it was fourth place. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, like you say, we talked about it before and I said very similar then. Um, of course, the FA Cup would be amazing. It, like you say, it's a, it's a trophy. We've, we, we ain't got many of them. Uh, no, not in our lifetime. Not in our lifetime, mate. It'd be nice to have one, uh, to have one. But Champions League football would do, or could, it would have the potential to do so, so much more for the club. And, uh, and um, yeah. like and that's where I you mean, need to be. That's where you need to be as a that's club. That's where man. you need to be. I mean, every year you get an opportunity. Every year you can win the FA Cup. Right, the FA Cup, anyone can win it. Every year there's a chance to win it. The chance to finish in the top four, to break into that top four is about and get Champions League football just doesn't... It, it's, it takes something special for that to happen. Do you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, 100% for me, uh, it would be probably controversially as well, I imagine, for, um, our opinion there. But yeah, yeah no, top hey, four. Uh, Another thing I also mentioned when, when I said that as well. Okay, yeah, as we said, the trophy, amazing, amazing day, amazing memories for the rest of your life. But can you imagine as well the memories you could get from Barcelona coming to up to uh, coming to the London Stadium, Real Madrid, Juventus, even your Borussia Dortmunds and mm. your sort of lower level Champions League. Is again the trophy is amazing, but to experience that Barcelona coming to play or going to the new Camp and watching, like that they're also well up there with the oh, same yeah. memories. Well, that would be like yes, obviously Leicester won the league, but I bet they wouldn't take away that Champions League experience for an FA Cup. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Let let us know, guys. Champions League, and and I'm saying fourth place, and we've qualified for the group stage or FA Cup. Yeah. Answer that below, guys. Right. So we qualify for Champions League. Got guaranteed six games or FA Cup win. Let me know, um, Greg. After Bilic's comments on not bringing in any more exciting players, do you think we have enough firepower up front as I think we cannot rely on Sacco and Carroll? Yeah, talked about it before. Um, kind of touched on it earlier. 100%, we can't rely on Carroll and Sacco. Yes, and we definitely, definitely need another striker. Yeah, I totally agree. Um Craig, he actually commented on the last podcast. Um, he said, if we could buy any of the England youngsters, who would it be? Love your videos. Um, Deli Ali for me. Uh, probably the best English player out there at the moment. Um, would do wonders in our midfield, you know, score probably 15 goals. Uh, I know he's a spud, but a fantastic footballer. Mm. Yeah, I mean, he's, an, he's probably the obvious shot, isn't he? Um, I mean... To be honest, I don't even know. I'm trying to think who, who else I would even really take. Like uh, as the, for youngsters, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is the key word there, youngsters. I like I said, I do like Ross Barkley as well. Um, mm. I don't know why we're not sniffing around him either. To be honest, apparently think... his price his price is going down day by day. Apparently, yeah. originally they were asking for fifty. Now they're only asking for thirty five. So it could be another one end of the window. We could get a bargain there. I, I think we should be sniffing though. Yeah. If you can get him thirty-five million, I think we should be sniffing. Definitely, yeah, I think he'd be excellent for us as well. But who knows? Maybe we are. I think it's his wages as well that are keeping teams like Tottenham away, because mm. I think he's asking for something like one hundred and forty grand a week. Whether that's in our locker now, because of the wages we're paying, like Chikorito and pit things like that, I don't know. Um, that is it for the questions, guys. Thank you so, so much. Um, the questions are just getting more and more every week. And that, that is a key reason why Paul also said that he is going to start splitting the podcast up because mm. we want to make sure that we answer all your questions because, again, it makes the show. It gives us something to talk about. Um, we also get your opinions. And it also you know, encourages us to talk about things that we might not have added on to our agenda. Yeah. Um, let me just remind you guys, if you didn't catch the podcast last week, um, there is now a blog 
from uh, the Free Hammers. It's called the Free Hammers Blog .wordpress.com. Uh, there is now three entries in there. There's two from me, uh, one from Lee. Uh, Paul may start adding them, and obviously I said I'm going to do my player ratings on there once a week as well. Uh, one other thing to remind you of, guys, I did say I would get it out. There it is. That is what is up for grabs when we get 2,000 subscribers. It is only 151 more away as I'm speaking now. As you can see, it is signed. Mikko Antonio, Winston Reid, and Diafra Sacco, the last people to score at Upton Park. Fantastic prize. And it will, we will announce the winner once we get 2,000 subscribers. Uh, next week, we'll be back. Hopefully, Lee will be back uh, for the season preview. Uh, we've got some fantastic guests lined up. Uh, people have been getting in touch, but I'm, I don't want to announce any names, you know, because it's probably going to be more as the season starts. Um, yeah, until next week and the season preview, uh, keep your questions coming in anytime you want, actually. That was a key point I, need, I wanted to make. Any time you want, you don't have to wait for me to tweet out sending your questions. Just comment in the video, comment on Twitter. Anyway, until then, it's goodbye from me. It's goodbye from Paul. Come on, you ones. Keep believing. Let's go. Cheers.